Dala is one of the many DACA recipients. She and her family legally immigrated to this country when she was just six years old. She joins us now from Washington. So, uh, Lizia, what was your initial reaction when you heard about President Trump's plan to end this program? And just clarify for us how your family came to the United States. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. So my family and I moved to the U.S. almost 21 years ago from Canada. We came legally on a visa um, and tried multiple times to get permanent residency. But one time our lawyer filed our paperwork late and another time the employer sponsoring us sold his business. And so because of that change in ownership, we had to restart the entire application process. It was extremely expensive, extremely time consuming, and we played by the rules. But more than 20 years later, we still find ourselves undocumented. Um, you know, I, we had heard reports this weekend about President Trump possibly eliminating the program. But what we had also heard on Friday is that he said that he loves streamers, that he wants to find a solution for them um, because he knows that we we add billions of dollars to the U.S. economy. DACA has allowed us to work. Um, it has allowed me to buy a home. It has allowed me to pay off tens of thousands of dollars in student loans. And so I hope that President Trump will keep that program in place until Congress can pass a bipartisan legislative solution that gives all 800,000 of us some type of certainty and allows us to continue living and working here. We just had a list of the countries where most of those protected by DACA have come from. Uh, I think that you're an important voice because you let people know that there are other stories out there it's not always people coming across the border from Mexico and you know like you said you came from Canada legally um, so when you knew your family's story when did you realize that you were in the country in fact illegally well, I found out about my undocumented status during my junior year of college. I went to Northwestern and my dad said, you got a letter in the mail from the Department of Homeland Security. And it was a notice to appear in immigration court, which is basically the first step in the deportation process. Uh, I was completely shocked. I mean, I had grown up uh, just as American as anyone else. I was a Girl Scout. I played league basketball. Um, I worked at the local grocery store when I was in high school. Um, and I think this is the same story of many people who are undocumented or currently have DACA status is we are American in every single way except by virtue of birth um, and with DACA we have been able to amplify our contributions to this country. Many of us go to school. Uh, more than 90% of us are gainfully employed. We pay taxes, state taxes, and federal taxes. Uh, we contribute in many, many ways. And so we really want Congress to pass the DREAM Act. There is no other option. Uh, we need them to stand up um, because at this point, there's really two decisions that they can make. They can choose to uh, prioritize all dreamers for deportation and they can ev evict us from our home or they can stand on the right side of history and pass a solution that allows us to stay. And if you could speak to President Trump and these lawmakers today, what would you tell them? You know, I think that the majority of the American public stands with dreamers. We saw that um, this weekend, Senator Lankford from Oklahoma came out and said that dreamers deserve a solution. We saw the attorney general from Tennessee pull out of his threat to sue the government over DACA because he, and he specifically cited that there is a human element to this. Um, there are 800,000 lives at stake. Uh, our, we have built the entire trajectory of our lives to stay here and to contribute here. Um, we have jobs here. Uh, there is so much at stake for us personally um, and also for the millions of Americans who live with us and work with us and study with us every single day. So what I would tell President Trump is I urge you to call on Congress to pass the DREAM Act. I urge you to keep the, the DACA program in place um, because without that program 800,000 people will lose their jobs. The U.S. economy is going to take a hit of $433 billion over the next 10 years. It's not something that our country can afford either economically or morally. So you know the counter argument, Lizia, is uh, you know, yep, there's a, uh, a, a compelling human uh, argument that we heard from you, but there is the rule of law, and if you're here illegally, you need to leave. What do you say to those people? Look, I think a lot of people have said, um, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you should do things the right way. Uh, you know, what I would tell them is that many people do try. Uh, and, you know, the point is, is that dreamers are already here. We have been here for at least 10 years. We are contributing members of society. Um, and I hope that the DREAM Act will pass soon and allow us to continue uh, being productive members of society. Lizia Dalla, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Well, nearly one in eight couples 
in the United States struggle to get pregnant, and there's nothing cheap about fertility treatments. You might expect a tech company or a big bank to offer coverage for treatments like in vitro fertilization, but get this, Starbucks is also offering the perk even for its part-time employees.